you start thinking in a different way and you interrupt the automatic emotional response and bring into play what we call the problem-solving mind. What happens is that people eat or get in the habit of using food to shut off their mind because they don't want to think about something. Oftentimes they don't want to think about something because it's painful or the feelings are strong or it reminds them of something. You have an emotional part of your mind that reacts immediately and intensely with strong feelings. You have a rational part of your mind in which you can sort out those feelings and figure out what's real and then you can figure out what to do. So this is a program that actually helps the person gain confidence in their problem-solving mind and become less fearful of their emotional mind. my feelings of being overwhelmed and therefore I didn't have to eat. That's all going to go in your history. Why you're doing it and it tells you what you've done so far. It asks very basic questions like the first one I think is where are you right now? which is a great question because it kind of ground, it grounded me into, okay, where am I actually right now? And then what is it, that it's, what's going on? What do you want to do? I want to eat an extra meal. I want to snack on something I don't feel like I should. I want to abandon any diet that I'm trying to adhere to. And that was the thing, the answer that I would most often press, like, forget my diet. And uh, that was how I could tell that something was going on. So it would ask these questions that are very basic. If you have a craving, it will remind you of your old pattern here. You can stop and reflect upon it. You can be in an office and have some time and pull out your cell phone and just read it. What we are doing is we're providing all the necessary information in the right sequence and the right process that simulates psychotherapy. I suppose my bias is always going to be towards one-to-one uh, -to -one intervention because it can be much more nuanced to how the individual is. You can pick up all sorts of cues apart from a direct answer to a question. It's horses for courses. There are some patients who respond to one particular intervention. There are other patients who, um, that doesn't, where that doesn't work, you need to do something different. Um, I think one of the problems with patients with overeating and obesity is they're all lumped together. Uh, and then it looks as if nothing works, when in fact certain things work for certain subgroups. And it's identifying which group the people are in and, and what works for them that's important. Again, to some extent, I think that's an advantage that a face-to-face -face, um, consultation would have.